This lesson is without question the most important lesson that you'll ever get. Without goals, you go nowhere. With goals, you can go anywhere. Now look it. I mentioned before, I carry a goal card in my pocket. And it's got what I want written on it. When I wrote it out, I painted a picture with words. I got a picture in my mind and I wrote it out. Now that picture was impregnated into a group of cells in my brain. When I put my hand in my pocket, put it in your purse or your pocket, when I put my hand in my pocket and touch this goal card, a sensory factor touch is affected. A light message goes rifle firing through the central nervous system and it resonates with that group of cells in my brain. They increase in amplitude of vibration and the picture that's written on the card flashes on the screen of my mind. Now, you cannot be thinking of bad things and thinking of your goal at the same time. It's very important you think of what you want. Now I'm gonna flip over and look at the um, pad here for a few minutes, Scott. I'm gonna, this is a little drawing, represents your mind, and of course this is your body. Now here's what we wanna get really straight. Mind expresses itself with and through the body. If you wanna know what's going on in a person's mind, watch their behavior patterns. Take a look at the results they're getting. It's an expression of what's going on here. That's, it's always the way it is, and it's never any different, and that's true for everyone. So let's look at it again. Here we are here, I don't like that circle. Here's the body. Now, you have sensory factors hooked up here. You can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And information is begging your conscious attention. This is your conscious mind here. Okay, information's begging your conscious attention from outside. It, it never stops, it, it's, uh, it's always like that. You want to take control of your mind and you want to be thinking of what you want to think. Now we're gonna go through this on slides, I want to show it to you here. You impress that idea of what you want upon your subconscious mind. Now here's the tricky part of this. The subconscious mind is universal intelligence. The subconscious mind is omnipresent. Now think of this for a moment. Let's suppose I phone you and you could be in Singapore and I'm in Toronto. I get you on the other end of the line. Now it looks like we're a long ways apart. That's an illusion. We are both on the same frequency. And so we can send pictures, we can look at each other, we can carry on a conversation. Understand that everything is in universal intelligence. Everything, all knowledge, all the power, all the money, <laughs> everything. And when you impress that idea upon subconscious mind, you attract everything that's in harmony with it just the same as if you got the other person on the other end of the line with your telephone. Does it affect somebody in Singapore, in Shanghai, in Buenos Aires, if you're in Toronto? Absolutely it does. Because you're tapping in to everything. Now think, stay with me here for a moment. When you impress that idea, and you stay emotionally involved with that idea, that idea changes everything in your physical world. Your physical vibration changes, you change what you attract into your life, 
you change your behavior, ultimately you change the result. Okay? Now, we're going to go back to the slides. Okay? Now think, I've been playing with this for 60 years. I'm really good at this. I'm not much good at anything else, but I don't want to do anything else. This, I love this. I fell in love with this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to reiterate something I already told you. I was sitting with Earl Nightingale in 1966. Now, I had already been studying his material. I was already carrying a gold card. I had on the back of the card at that time this great dream, this surging, dynamic thing invisible to all the world, except to the person who holds it, is responsible for every great advancement of man. Earl Nightingale wrote that. I had the, that on the back of gold cards, and I've had it on the back of gold cards for years. It's not on the back of this one right now. I got, you were born rich on the back of this one. And everybody is born rich. Most people are just a little short of money. But I was sitting in his office. I had been with him for about an hour. It was just a phenomenal experience for me because I'd been studying his material for a long time. And I was leaving after the hour, and I asked him, I said, Earl, what's the big deal? I mean, what is the big secret? And uh, he said, there is no secret, Bob. He said, it's simply a matter of sitting down, deciding what you want. And um, make up your mind you're going to get it. He's decide what you love doing. And commit to do it for the rest of your life. He said, the problem with most people is they don't know what they love doing. They never think of it. But God, I'm going to tell you, I got charged right there. Yeah, I can still see myself sitting in his office. It was at 333 North Michigan. And I knew exactly what I want. I wanted to do what he was doing. I wanted to do it with him. And I made up my mind I was going to do it with him. Two years later, I'll... Uh, I'll bring up a slide in another, in another presentation tomorrow. And I was his vice president of sales. I have a picture of myself, Earl uh, Nangill, and Lloyd Conant, his business partner, the three of us. It was, it was one of the happiest times of my life. I mean, I just absolutely loved it. Well, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And as I say, I'm really good at it. And I, I want to get better at it. And that's because I've been doing the same thing all my adult life. I was very fortunate. I figured out what I absolutely loved. And I cut everything else off, and I dedicated myself to what I love doing. Now, that's a long time. You have paradigms. We talked about them yesterday. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior, and almost all of our behavior is habitual. Okay, now think of that for a moment. Paradigms literally control people's lives to an enormous degree. I want you to change that, okay? Now look, it. success is 5% strategy, 95% mindset. I was sitting in a room with Catherine Weishupel, um, an absolutely brilliant lady in Germany. Gina was sitting there with me. She was my assistant. She was taking notes. And I was talking to these various consultants in our company. She's one of the top. And um, she said that she really believes success is 5% strategy, 95%. And I got her to repeat it. I had never heard that before. But intuitively, I knew she was right. I just knew she was right. So don't get hung up in strategies. It's mindset, all right? Most people are extras in their own movie. They don't even know who the director of their life is. I want to suggest you become your director. You decide exactly what it is you want. And I'm going to show you how to get it. Now look at this, Scott. Decide what kind of a life you actually want, then say no to everything that isn't that. Write that down. 
Decide what kind of a life you actually want. Then say no to everything that isn't that. Okay? Now we're talking about the mind. Your marvelous mind. Now, let's look here. There's the mind and the body. Now, I'm going to be going over things two, three times different way. So I want you to really pay attention. Okay? We're going to take the mind now and divide it into two parts. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Now, you have hooked up to you sensory factors. You can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And they're like little antennae that are hooked up to your conscious mind. And I'm going to tell you, they're super sensitive. They pick up everything that's going on around. And I'm going to tell you, the outside world is begging for your conscious attention. And unfortunately, most people's paradigm has them paying attention to what's going on outside. That's too bad. Okay? Now, the conscious mind is also the intellectual mind. Okay? The emotional mind is where the paradigm is. You have hooked up in your intellectual mind higher faculties. And these are what separate you from all the rest of the animal kingdom. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is really a sort of a sad story. You go and ask 10 people today what their higher faculties are, what their intellectual factors are. And I'm going to tell you, they don't know. Because we've never been taught how to utilize these. This is really sad. Most people don't even know they have them. Oh, you'll hear people talk about, leave that up, Scott. You'll hear people talk about their imagination. You'll hear people talk about memory or reason, but they don't really understand these are higher faculties. These are what separate us from all of the rest of the animal kingdom. The rest of the animal kingdom operates by instinct, which is perfect. We had instinct removed and these put in place, and they're sitting right here in our conscious mind. Now, you're going to use these working towards your goal. You're going to use these to change the paradigm. They have the ability to say to the paradigm, get out of town. That's right. Your higher faculties have the ability to change the paradigm and build a new paradigm. That's what the Proctor Gallagher Institute is all about. And it's the vibration that dictates what comes into your life. It also dictates what you do. This is so important. Now look here for a moment. We're going to jump this around different ways because I want you to see it from different power, points of view. There's a power flowing into your consciousness. Religion calls it spirit. Science calls it theology. Call it whatever you want. It's a power. It's infinite in its capacity. And it flows into your conscious mind. And you can take and create thoughts out of that power. You can literally create thoughts out of that power. Now, with those thoughts, you're going to impress them upon your subjective mind. You're also going to send them off out into the universe. The ones you impress upon the subjective mind are going to cause you to feel the way you feel. Now, those feelings are expressed with and through the body, but they're also sent out into the universe. You see? And when those feelings are impressed upon the body, it causes the body to act the way it acts. Now you look at this, one, two, three results. See, what you're talking about is your attitude. Your attitude is the composite of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Now you choose your thoughts, or you're going to accept the thoughts of somebody else that come in through your sensory factors. So your thoughts then cause your feelings. If you find a person says they're feeling bad, you know that person is entertaining negative thoughts. Now it's rather sad, but that's the way it is. And those feelings then are expressed with and through the body and produce the results. It's one, two, three, attitude. 
Now let's look here now. Here we're talking about what we want. We're talking about wants, okay? Those wants will turn into a desire. Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility, the want, within. It's the expression of the unexpressed possibility within, seeking expression without through your action. You see, if you want to build a desire, you build the desire by holding the picture of what you want and letting yourself get emotionally involved in it. This, this is critical information. Should be taught in kindergarten. Should be taught at home before the child goes to school. Children will understand this. Listen, think of it this way for a moment. You have little children, little children, and they're talking. They're carrying on a conversation with you. They may be speaking in two or three languages at the same time. But we think, well, they can't understand this. And yet they can learn languages. They can understand this, trust me. Now watch here real carefully. There's the heart. Now remember what I told you. The heart is the divine side of your personality. This is where the wants originate. This is where wants, watch this really carefully. It's the spirit, it's the dynamic power within you that's going to cause you to activate your imagination. You see, the wants come from inside. The wants come from the divine side of our nature. Your spiritual DNA is perfect. There's perfection within you. That's why all the great leaders all down through history have always said, all things are possible. The want comes from the heart, from the spiritual essence of who you are. And it jabs you in the consciousness. It activates your imagination. And that want grows in your consciousness. Then you take that want and you turn it back over to the heart. You turn that want back over to the infinite power within you. Now, put the screen on for a moment, Scott. Okay. Here we go. Remember what I said? Watch here for a moment. You got your want. And here you have the heart. And you're impressing that upon the heart. Now what did we tell you earlier? We pointed out that the heart is universal intelligence. Now, here's the trick. Universal intelligence operates by law. This is pure unadulterated spirit. One of the first laws of the universe is the perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy is always moving into form, through form and back into form. Go on outside and look outside. You'll see cloud formation come. The cloud will start to get dark and out of it will come water that it comes from no thing, from the non-physical. It moves into form. The leaves come on the tree, they fall off the tree, they go into the earth, goes back into the tree, leaves come back on the tree, they fall off the tree. It's the perpetual transmutation of energy. That idea must move into physical form. It absolutely must move into physical form with and through you. See, it puts you in a vibration, that sets up attraction. And you attract from where? From everywhere. Because you're tapping into universal intelligence. Okay, come back to the screen, Scott. As you impress that idea, the want then turns into desire. The desire alters the vibration you're in. The vibration causes the action the action causes a reaction that changes the conditions, the circumstance, and the environment. Or if we put them all together, you can say in the vernacular, it changes the results. 
This is not a game we're playing. This is serious business. This is your life you're dealing with. And most people are going around, they can't even tell you what they want. So what's happening to them? Well, let's come back to the screen for a minute, Scott. I'll show you what's happening to them. See these little sensory factors? Whatever is going on in their outside world is coming in through their senses. It's putting in here, they impress it upon here, and that causes the result. What is this idea? God knows. It's just, it's just an idea. It comes from other people, it comes from the newspaper. Most of those ideas are negative. They're negative. And so the results are negative. Now you've got a choice. You can choose the positive. You don't need to accept the negative. See how that goes? Okay, go back to the screen, Pa. Scott, please. Now look it. Let's back that up. The heart is in the subjective mind. That's the universal side of your personality. Wants come from the heart. Spirit is always for expansion and fuller expression. You've got to let the want inside come to you. The problem is the want comes to the consciousness. The person thinks, I can't do that. They've got poor opinion of themselves. We're going to be talking about that later on in the week. That's called a self-image, the image you have of yourself. Now, the want comes from the heart. And it, boom, it goes into your consciousness and activates your imagination. And it gets you to hold the picture on your conscious mind of the good that you desire. You turn that back over to spirit, and through the reciprocal law of spirit, it gives it back to you in physical form. This is magnificent how this happens. And it all happens by law. Not sometimes, all the time. Thanks, God. Now look it. Here's the ABC of goals. And there's another way of teaching it. Most people, when they think of what they want, they think of something they already know how to do. I use an example. I've been using it for, for 25, 50 years. A young guy in a seminar came to me and he said, could I talk to you about my goal? And I said, sure, what do you want? He said, I want to get a new car. I said, okay, well, go and get a new car. I said, what kind of a car do you want? He's a new Pontiac. I said, well, they're pretty nice. I've had a Pontiac. Um, I said, what are you driving now? He's a Pontiac. I said, mm -hmm. And I said, how long have you had it? He said, four years. I said, how old is the car? He's four years old. I said, then you're telling me you got a new Pontiac four years ago. Is that correct? Yeah. But he says, it's old. I need to get another one. Well, you see, there's nothing wrong, getting, wrong with him getting another Pontiac. But that would not constitute a goal. He has demonstrated by results in his own life that he's known how to get a new Pontiac for four years. Goals are not to get things. That's a side benefit. Goals are to grow. You've got to be going after things you don't know how to get. That wouldn't qualify. If your goal is an A-type goal, something you've already done in the past won't qualify. Well, where do you go then? Well, you go up here. What do you think you can do? Well, what would come in there? Well, I don't know, any one of a number of things. So you sit and you're really thinking, what do I think I could do? First of all, if Harry give me the money he owed me, and if Betty says what she's gonna do, she does it, and if that other group over there, if they, if they come through, then I think I could do this, whatever this might be. See, they've got it planned out. They actually can see how it could happen. They know how it could happen. That isn't a good goal. There's no growth in that. You already know how to do it. See, there's growth in every goal I set. And there has been ever since I was given this book. I set goals to do things I don't know how to do. It's the desire that causes you to want to do it. You see, you got to get up here 
of what you want. But if you're going to go up there, you've got to fantasize. And that's kept for little kids. You were taught not to do that when you're just a young person. That's for little kids. You don't fantasize. So what do you do? Well, because you accepted the wrong information, you're going to go from what you know how to do over here to what you think you can do. And pretty soon, there's no motivation there. So you quit, you come back here, and you'll do what you know how to do. And then you go up here again. What do you think you can do? Here's the problem here. When you're doing either what you know or what you think, you're not getting support from anybody around you. You're not. Because they probably don't want you to get it. Oh, they may say they do, but they probably don't because they're probably competing with you and you're competing with them. You see, that's what people do. They go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and pretty soon they just finish. Now, here's the three-step process for goals. Remember we said over here, you got to fantasize? Well, fantasy is the first step. Then theory, then fact. If you're going to get what you want, you're going to have to fantasize. How do you do that? You do that with your imagination. You do it with your imagination. You build a fantasy. You see yourself with what you want. This studio was a fantasy of mine. This company was a fantasy of mine. It started out as a fantasy, but I understand the process. And you can understand it. Really pay attention here. You go from fantasy to theory. This is where you go from using the imagination. Remember, the imagination is one of the higher faculties. Then you flip over to reason, and you start thinking about it. Now, before you can turn the theory into a goal, you've got to pass a couple of tests. You've got to say, am I able to do this? Well, the truth is you're able to do anything. You're God's highest form of creation. You're able to do anything. That's the beautiful part about it. Okay? Then you have to ask, am I willing? Am I willing? You know, I talk to a Rosh a lot. Rosh and I become very good friends. And Rosh is a great salesperson, great part of this company. Um, talk to Tommy and Mikey, Sandy. You know, I'm talking to the different people in the company. And um, everything in me has told me to quit this. I don't know how many times over the past 50 years, 60 years. But I absolutely refused to quit. I had this idea in my mind and I had fallen in love with it. If you're going after what you really want, you're not going to quit. It's when you manufacture something because you think you should have a goal and you write it on a card, but it's not the real thing. You go back and you say, am I able? Of course I'm able. I have infinite power locked up within me. Am I willing? I am willing to pay the price. Whatever the price is at that moment, your fantasy turned into a goal. And that goal was impressed upon universal intelligence. And when that happens, it begins to move into physical form. You go from fantasy to theory to fact. That's when you're able to build bigger and better fantasies. That is called a creative process. You're a creative being. You've been created in God's image. You have creative faculties. You're able to do magnificent things. When Werner von Braun was asked by President John Kennedy what it would take to build a rocket that'll carry a man to the moon, and bring him back safely to earth. He said, the will to do it. That's all it'll take. And that's all it'll take you to get to where you're going. The will to do it. You have to know where you're going. You have to know you're going to get there. See, it's an attitude. That's really what it is. Now, let's take a look at what attitude is. Okay. It's our wants. It's our feelings. And it's our actions. 
This is what attitude is. You see, when a person really locks into what they want, they get emotionally involved in it. All kinds of good things start to happen. Now, go back to the screen, please, Paul. Here, Scott. Let's take a look. You've got this marvelous mind. You know, if you just look at your body, it's mind-boggling when you think of what's going on in your body. But then when you start to think of the mind, and you start to think of the phenomenal power that you've got locked up in your mind, you're capable of doing whatever you want. Listen. Pay attention to what's going on in your outside world through your senses. I want you to really begin to think. Really begin to think. Do you know, no one knows what you're capable of doing. You see, you think with a reasoning factor. Remember I said you have all these higher faculties here in your consciousness? You have perception. You've got the will. You've got reason. You've got imagination. You've got memory. And you have intuition. Those higher faculties will enable you to take this power that's flowing into you. There's a power flowing into you. It knows no limits. Okay? And you put these higher faculties to work, you can build anything you want in your conscious mind. Now just think. What kind of a picture do you want to build? You see, I firmly believe your heart is jabbing you right now. I think your heart is jabbing you in the consciousness right now. There's something you really want. Quit denying it. Now you're thinking, well, I, I don't know where the money's going to come from. Here. I tell a story in this book. If you don't have it, you can go to our site. Go to Proctor Gallagher Institute. You can download it. We'll give it to you. There's a story in here about a couple. It's on page... Wait a minute. <laughs> page 101. Story on page 101. They wanted to buy a house, and I said, go buy one. They said, we can't buy a house. We haven't got any money. And I said, you don't need any money. They said, what do you mean we don't need any money? I said, you haven't made the decision to buy the house. What do you need the money for? Now, there's another story in here on page 186. A group of people raised three million in three hours, three days after they thought of it. See, all things are possible. All things. It's up here. You've got to decide what do you want. Understand wants come from the divine side of your personality. It comes from the higher side of who you are. And these, this divine side is jabbing you in the consciousness all the time. Want this. That's because... Spirit wants you to grow. You say, I don't know if it's God's purpose. It's God's purpose. I'll tell you what God's purpose is, greater good. Where? In everything. And we see it everywhere we look. We see greater good, except where we're in charge. Let's see it where we're in charge. I don't care what you've been thinking in the past. I don't care what you've done in the past. Listen, I started out, I had two months high school. I had no formal education. Absolutely no business experience. You know, I think it's almost comical at times. Sandy Gallagher, my business partner, she'll be reading books on algebraic equations. I said, what are you doing? She's solving problems in this book. I have no idea how to do any of that. 
But I'll tell you what I do know how to do. I know how to build a picture in my mind of what I want. And I know how to hold that picture until that picture uh, turns into a desire right here. Because that's what happens to it. When you impress that picture upon the subconscious mind over and over and over, it becomes a desire. Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. It comes in the Latin desire to give birth to the children. That's the child. You're giving birth to the children, your ideas, your creative being. No one knows what you're capable of doing. There's no one alive that knows what you're capable of doing. You've got to sit down and say, what do I really want? I'm going to tell you something. You stick to what we teach you. You'll get everything you want. I've earned millions of dollars. You're going to hear from a couple of ladies early on in the week. Started with nothing. They were, they were nurses. Nurses don't earn a lot of money. They do very important work. They don't earn a lot of money. Both of these ladies have earned millions following what we're teaching. No one knows what you're capable of doing. Here's what you want to do. Look at This is so important. You're going to get some instructions in a few minutes, and the instructions are going to come to you from the people that really know what the hell they're talking about. I'm going to tell you, anybody in this company, they really know what they're talking about. They practice what we practice, what we preach, we teach it. You're going to ask yourself, what do you want? There's a power within you. That power is not only within you. It's omnipresent. It is omnipresent. It's a part of everything in the whole universe. And that power within you will give you everything you want. It's absolutely magnificent when you think about it. And it'll give to you in physical form. It's such a beautiful concept that most people don't understand it. They go right through their life and don't understand it. This should be taught in school, but it's not. You see, you could actually teach your kids to take the report card, write the report card before school starts, and then they only think of how they can, and they don't spend any time thinking of why they can't. The same power that flows to and through you is flowing to and through them. We're all playing with exactly the same rules. This is so important. Don't get caught up in A or B. A or B is what you've already learned how to do, what you know you can do because you thought it through. I want you to go after something. You have no idea how it's going to happen. What do you really want? This is so important. Goals are, without question, one of the most important subjects you'll ever study. Now, I've given it to you very fast here, a number of different ways. And I did it like that because I want you to really understand this. You're working with a power that's infinite. You're, you're an expression of that power yourself. There is only one power. Everything's an expression of the same thing. Everything. If I took everything in this studio and lit it on fire, it would all be reduced to the same formless substance. What we call space, this is energy. You pump more of this energy into the room and don't let any out, what'll happen, you'll blow the room up. You'll say what you don't know can't, what you don't know won't hurt you. What you don't know can kill you. We've got to start knowing. Let's understand who we are, what we're capable of doing. Let's understand how those higher faculties work.